Sylvia Marie Lincolns was a young girl. She suffered for three months from being hurt and treated very badly by her caregiver Gertrude Banisuski, Gertrude's kids and kids from the neighborhood. Sadly, Sylvia became very sick and passed away on October 26, 1965 in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello everyone and welcome to Noches de Terror to Study English. My name is Cesar and I'm a university English teacher in Mexico. As a language learner myself, siempre me ha gustado aprender con historias y películas de terror. Así que me hice la pregunta por qué no un podcast para aprender inglés con temáticas de terror. Y así nació esta idea. Espero les guste and you too can enjoy these stories while learning English. This story has been adapted for A1 learners and if you would like to listen along with subtitles, you can check our YouTube channel. Also feel free to change the speed if you think I am speaking too fast. In our ninth episode, we will talk about the horrible murder of Sylvia Lincolns. Sylvia Marie Lincolns was born on January 3rd, 1949. Her parents, Lester Cecile Lincolns and Elizabeth Frances Grimes, worked at carnivals. Sylvia had two older siblings, Daniel and Diana, who were twins, and two younger siblings, Betty and Jenny, who were also twins. Jenny had polio, which made one of her legs weak, so she needed a brace to walk properly. Lester and Elizabeth had an unstable marriage and faced financial difficulties. They worked at carnivals in Indiana during the summer, selling candy, beer, and soda. Their sons helped them, but Sylvia and Jenny were kept from working to ensure their safety and education. So, they stayed with relatives like their grandmother due to the family's frequent moves and money troubles. In her teenage years, Sylvia made money by babysitting, running errands, and doing ironing for neighbors and friends. She often gave some of her earnings to her mother. Sylvia was friendly, confident, and lively. She had long wavy light brown hair that went past her shoulders and her friends fondly called her Cookie. Sylvia, despite being lively, often kept her mouth closed when smiling because she had lost a front tooth during her childhood while playing with one of her brothers. She loved music, especially the Beatles, and she was very protective of her timid younger sister. The two sisters enjoyed going to a local skating rink together, with Sylvia helping Jenny skate by holding her hand because Jenny had trouble due to her leg brace. In June 1965, Sylvia and Jenny lived with their parents in Indianapolis. However, on July 3rd, their mother was arrested and went to jail for shoplifting. In response, their father Lester arranged for them to live with Gertrude Benisuski. Gertrude was the mother of Paula and Stephanie Benisuski, two girls Sylvia and Jenny had recently become friends with at Arsenal Technical High School. Gertrude promised Lester that she would take care for his daughters as if they were her own until he returned. After the July 4th holiday, Sylvia and Jenny went to live at the Benisuski house on East New York Street. This was arranged so their parents could travel with the carnival on the East Coast. Gertrude was supposed to get $20 per week to take care of the sisters until the parents returned in November. In the beginning, the sisters didn't experience much discipline or abuse at the Benizuski home. Sylvia even sang along to music with Stephanie and helped with housework willingly. They also went to Sunday school with the Banizuski's children, and the pastor thought Sylvia was very religious. Sin embargo, los pagos semanales de 20 dólares de Lester Lincolns por el cuidado de sus hijas comenzaron a llegar tarde, a veces con uno o dos días de retraso. En respuesta, Gertrude se enfureció y lastimó físicamente a las hermanas, golpeando sus traseros desnudos con un palo. Gertrude les diría cosas como cuide de ustedes dos pequeñas perras durante una semana y para nada. A finales de agosto, ambas niñas fueron golpeadas unas 15 veces en la espalda con el palo porque Paula las acusó de comer demasiado en una cena de la iglesia. By mid-August, Gertrude began to focus her abuse mostly on Sylvia, probably because she was jealous of Sylvia's youth, 
looks, respectability and potential. These abuse included beatings, not giving enough food and even making Sylvia eat old or spoiled food from the garbage. Sylvia was also wrongly accused of stealing candy she had actually bought. During dinner, Gertrude Paula and a boy from the neighborhood named Randy Gordon Leper forced Sylvia to eat a hot dog with too much mustard, ketchup and spices. This made Sylvia vomit and she was forced to eat what she had thrown up. In a rare moment of defiance, Sylvia spread a rumor at Arsenal Technical High School that Stephanie and Paula Benzuski were involved in prostitution, likely in response to similar accusations made against her at home. When Stephanie found out about this rumor at school, she confronted Sylvia. Sylvia admitted to starting it, apologized while crying, but when Stephanie's boyfriend, Coy Randolph Hubbard, learned of the rumor, he attacked Sylvia brutally. He slapped her, banged her head against the wall, and flipped her onto the floor. Gertrude then used a paddle to beat Sylvia when she found out about the fight. Sylvia Likens went through very bad treatment from Gertrude Benzuski, Paula, and other kids in her neighborhood. They hurt her badly made her feel very embarrassed and said false things about her. Paula even hurt herself while hurting Sylvia and kept doing it with her broken arm. Gertrude also made Sylvia's sister Jenny join in on the bad treatment or else she would hurt Jenny too. Coy Hubbard y sus amigos fueron a la casa de Gertrude e hicieron cosas realmente malas a Sylvia. Trabajaron junto a Gertrude y sus hijos para lastimar a Sylvia la golpearon, la trataron mal en sesiones de judo, la cortaron, la quemaron con cigarrillos y le hicieron mucho daño en sus partes íntimas. Incluso hicieron que Silvia se desnudara y se masturbara con una botella de Pepsi en la sala de estar. The Lincoln sisters were too scared to ask for help from family or school adults because they feared it would make things worse. Jenny wanted to tell family members, but Gertrude threatened her with the same abuse as Sylvia. Jenny also faced bullying and sometimes violence from neighborhood girls when she mentioned Sylvia's situation. Lester and Elizabeth Lickens visited in July and August when their carnival schedule allowed it. During their last visit on October 5th, Sylvia and Jenny acted normal in front of their parents because Gertrude and her children were there. But as soon as Lester and Elizabeth left, Gertrude teased Sylvia asking, What will you do now, Sylvia? They're gone. In September, Jenny and Sylvia met their older sister Diana at the park. They told Diana about the bad things happening to them because of their caregiver, especially Sylvia. Sylvia got hurt even when she didn't do anything wrong, but they didn't say where they lived, so Diana thought they might be making it sound worse than it was. Because Sylvia was treated very badly, she couldn't control when she peed and she couldn't use the bathroom. On October 6, Gertrude put her in the basement. There, Sylvia was mostly without clothes, hardly got any food and had no water. Sometimes she was tied to the basement railing, almost not touching the ground. El 22 de octubre, John Benizuski Jr. molestó a Sylvia haciéndole creer que le daría sopa con los dedos pero luego se la quitó a pesar de que ella tenía mucha hambre. Más tarde, Gertrude permitió que Silvia durmiera arriba, pero solo si no se orinaba. Esa noche Silvia le pidió a Jenny que le diera agua en silencio antes de irse a dormir. The next morning, Gertrude discovered that Silvia had wet herself. As a punishment, Silvia was made to put an empty glass Coca-Cola bottle in her private area in front of the Benzuski children and then sent to the basement. Afterward, Gertrude asked Sylvia to take off her clothes in the kitchen, then Gertrude said, you marked my daughters and now I will mark you. She used a hot needle to write the words, I'm a prostitute and proud of it, on Sylvia's belly. Unable to finish carving words into Sylvia's abdomen, Gertrude told 14-year-old Richard Dean Hobbs to finish it while she left with Jenny. Hobbs continued causing Sylvia great pain. Later, both Hobbs and 10-year-old Shirley Benizuski took Sylvia to the basement and tried to burn the letter S under her left breast with an anchor bolt. 
they made a mistake and it looked like the number three. Gertrude cruelly teased Sylvia about the words on her stomach, saying she couldn't marry now. Sylvia sadly replied, I guess there's nothing I can do. Later that day, Sylvia had to show the carving to neighborhood children, with Gertrude falsely claiming she got it at a sex party. On the morning of October 26th, Sylvia couldn't talk properly or move well. Gertrude attempted to give her food, but when Sylvia couldn't hold a glass of milk, Gertrude became angry and sent her back to the basement. Más tarde, ese día, Sylvia se volvió delirante, gimiendo y balbuceando incoherentemente. Paula le pidió que recitara el alfabeto en inglés, pero Sylvia solo pudo decir las primeras cuatro letras y no pudo levantarse del suelo. Paula la amenazó para que se pusiera de pie y Gertrude ordenó a Sylvia, quien se había defecado encima de ella misma, que se limpiara. Some of Sylvia's tormentors then gathered in the basement. Sylvia tried to point at the faces of those she recognized, saying things like, You're Ricky and you're Gertie. Gertrude angrily told her to be quiet, saying, Shut up, you know who I am. A while later, Sylvia attempted to bite into a rotten pear, but couldn't, mentioning the looseness of her teeth. Jenny reminded her that her front tooth had been knocked out when she was seven. Jenny then left Sylvia in the basement to do gardening chores for neighbors in the hope of earning money. In an effort to clean Sylvia, a smiling John Benizuski Jr. used a garden hose bought by Gertrude that day. Sylvia tried to leave the basement but fell before reaching the stairs. In response, Gertrude stepped on Sylvia's head and stared at her. Around 5.30 p.m., Richard Hobbs came back home and saw Stephanie crying while holding Sylvia's skinny and injured body. Stephanie was told by her mother to wash Sylvia. Stephanie and Richard decided to give Sylvia a warm soapy bath and change her clothes. They put her on a bed in one of the rooms. As Sylvia quietly expressed her last wish for her daddy to come and for Stephanie to take her home, Stephanie turned to her younger sister Shirley and said, don't worry, she'll be okay. When Stephanie noticed that Sylvia wasn't breathing, she tried to help by breathing into Sylvia's mouth, but Gertrude insisted to the children that Sylvia was pretending. Sadly, Sylvia, who was 16 years old, passed away from her injuries at that moment. Los juicios por el asesinato de Sylvia Lakens son una parte muy triste y perturbadora de la historia legal estadounidense de 1965. Sylvia, una adolescente, soportó un sufrimiento y abuso inimaginables que condujeron a su muerte prematura. El proceso legal de este caso se llevó a cabo a través de una serie de juicios. Gertrude Benizuski, the main person involved, had her first trial in 1966 where she was found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. During this trial, the disturbing details of Sylvian long-lasting physical and emotional abuse under Gertrude's care were exposed. La hija de Gertrude, Paula Benizuski, tuvo un juicio por separado y fue condenada por asesinato en segundo grado por su participación en el maltrato a Sylvia. Pasó varios años en prisión antes de ser liberada bajo libertad condicional. Otras personas involucradas en el sufrimiento de Silvia también enfrentaron juicio y fueron declaradas culpables de diversos cargos, incluyendo agresión y homicidio involuntario. Estos juicios revelaron la magnitud del tormento infligido a Silvia Likens, que fue perpetrado por Gertrude Benizuski, sus hijos y niños del vecindario. This case serves as a chilling reminder of the terrible reality of child abuse and the legal system's duty to address such terrible acts. It tells us the importance of safeguarding the vulnerable and ensuring that those who neglect their responsibility are held responsible. Sylvia Lincoln's heartbreaking story forces us to face the harshness of child abuse and the quest for justice, emphasizing our obligation to safeguard and seek justice for those who require it. If you enjoyed this episode, please let me know in the comments, like it and share it with more people so they can learn and enjoy with Noches de Terror to study English. I'm Cesar, till the next episode. See you.